Hello viewers and friends, some claim that the age of a true gentleman is far behind us, but here at 284 Media, we definitely disagree. He may appear in different guises today, but the values and ideals that make him a gent are so important and they still stand. Gentlemen, aspiring gentlemen, and of course, our partners that hold us down, I'm Ron Grant. Welcome to season two of The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, a show poised to help guide modern day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. Now please, don't worry, it doesn't always involve suits and bow ties, but raw real-life lessons that translate to grounded, community-minded, well-rounded men. Thank you all for taking this journey with me. Creativity and ingenuity are some ingredients that help to foster a remarkable man. My guest today has served the Virgin Islands community in various capacities. He's not just a chef, understand this. He is a passionate culinary artist. The man literally makes love to his food. All filled with immaculate presentation, presence, and purpose. His culinary artistry is worldwide, and we are so blessed, and we should be considered blessed, to have him here in our shores. A son of the soil, a father and friend, the homie himself, the one and only, Mr. Neil Klein. We talk love, loss, starting over, and what's next for this creative genius, culinary creative genius. A conversation with the extremely talented Mr. Neil Klein, the true 21st century distinguished gentleman viewers. It's a conversation you don't want to miss. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. The wind! Oh! What the hell? I'm freaking out! Is time. Music. Coming to you live and direct from the beautiful British Virgin Islands. What's poppin', what's really good, what's happening, what's happening, what's up? Gentlemen, aspiring gentlemen, welcome back. I'm Ron Grant, big homie, literally. <laughs> the guy himself is on the set, Mr. Neil Klein. Welcome. Hi, right, thank you, Ron. Absolutely. Good to Cheers. be here. Cheers. Pleasure. Now, when I say not just a chef, it is important <clears throat> that persons don't get us, I think, uh, boxed in. You're right. definitely someone that I feel cannot be put in a box. Yeah. Uh, Wise beyond years, a creative genius. You've served the Virgin Islands in various capacities. But for those of us who may not know, those right. watching, who is Neil Klein? Where he come from? <laughs> so Neil Klein is Ron simply, you know, that King Garden Bay boy. Mm. I grew up in King Garden Bay. You know, to me, it's the mecca of hospitality. Um, I, I served at, you know, the church, um, King Garden Bay Baptist Church. That's my okay. home church. Uh, under the leadership of uh, Pastor Mel, you know, um, just a humble servant of the community, um, a, a guy that just loves people, you know. Um, I love my family, mm -hmm. my friends, you know, and I, I just love to have fun and, you know, just live life to the fullest as, as Eve, every day is the last. Absolutely. You know? Now, you talk about growing up in King Garden Bay, which I agree is right. the, uh, uh, pretty much the hospitality <coughs> mecca of the territory. It is. Do you think uh, growing up in that environment had anything to do with your career choice? Oh, most definitely. Um, it had everything to do with my career choice. Um, having been lived right across the street from Mayette's, mm -hmm. Stan Lee's, who was there first, as people may know, um, and then you had Reimer, you know. Uh, all these places basically helped me to, to focus and see where I wanted to be in life. Um, I don't think, I think everything that someone does, you know, you have to have some fun in it and you have to love and have a passion for it. Um, I have a passion for hospitality. I have a passion for culinary. Um, anything hospitality, okay. you know, serving people, that's my pleasure. You know, um, some people get high off of a lot of different things. Yeah. I get a high off of literally making people happy and serving them the way that they deserve to be served. Amazing. Now, when we think of the name Neil Klein, uh, many persons would immediately attribute it to uh, culinary delights. Right. Uh, but that does just not, it, it doesn't stay here. Um, you've had a, a, a wide career 
uh, uh-huh. not only in teaching, uh, but traveling the world and really sharing the talent <coughs> with others. I want to, I want you to talk to me a bit about the importance for our young men, whether it be in culinary or any other discipline, the importance of international um, training. Uh, what did that do for you, and what would you encourage them to uh, keep in mind? Because a, a lot of persons are very uh, patriotic right. um, to their home, and that's fine. Um, right. But in being patriotic, we don't want to be stifled. Correct. So tell me about that. So in my travel, international you know, training, whether it be school or representing the BVI or just you know, doing some you know, self-motivation and, and self-education, uh, for me, it's just a matter of exposure and being able to bring back experience to your shores. You know, um, ironically, we as BBI landers, sometimes we want to be the innovators, the creators Mm -hmm. of all that we do here. But sometimes the wheels are already outside there turning and that are working and that we can come back. And just like, you know, I learned a little bit about mechanics from, you know, a couple of my friends Mm -hmm. who are mechanics, we can align ourselves, you know, use those same methods and creativity and innovations to bring back to our islands and make it work. There's a lot of us that have traveled afar, you know, school, work, you know, or just basically living. And we've seen stuff, you know, we got accustomed to stuff, we liked it. So why not go out there and learn as much as you can from whoever you can and bring it back to your place and basically help or serve or create you know, your own little entity, you know, here in the Virgin Islands. People call us small. Mm -hmm. I think we're, you know, silent giants. I think we're actually pretty uh, larger than life. We are. We are larger than people. The things that, the guests that I've met in my travels, um, when I go out with the tourist board, for example, you know, and we do a lot of the, you know, different um, cooking venues, people travel from, Canada to Chicago just to be in a BVI experience, you know, come to Toronto, Canada, just to be in a BVI experience and the stories of delight and joy and excitement that they've had Mm -hmm. here in the BVI. It's more than encouraging to me. So when you go out there and you take your craft and you learn a whole lot of international, whether it be marine engineering, it may be culinary as I am in, it may be hospitality, it may be media. You know, you you have to, we sell the BVI. We are the BVI. Mm -hmm. And that's my belief for all my years. Whenever I go out anywhere in the world, I represent the British Virgin Islands. You know, no matter what I say, no matter what I do, how it goes, I represent the British Virgin Islands. So in my international experience, Get what you can get out there Mm -hmm. for anyone that's going out there. Get what you can get, you know, and bring it back home. There's nothing wrong with coming back home and trying to make it the best that it can be right here in the BVI. Well said. As we speak of that BVI pride and BVI love, uh, I think in essence, many times we get a little sidetracked or lost as it pertains to culture and heritage. You are one of the most patriotic people I know. Okay. What do you think Virgin Islanders should be paying more attention to as it pertains to identity? So one of the things that I I notice in a lot of countries, um, I travel to a lot of Caribbean countries as well. And one of the things that they pride themselves on is their flag, Mm -hmm. their flag. I've always wanted to see our flag flying by the roundabout, Mm. okay? High as a landmark, where no matter what part of the island that you are, once you're coming into that area, that you can see you're in the center of town and you have the Union Jack flying high, pride. We start with that, Okay. you know, that's one of the focuses. Um, Also with, with pride, I also think we need to, I'll be blunt, Mm -hmm. I don't think we embrace the tourism industry enough. We look at the exterior 
uh, client mm -hmm. that we have, the Americans, the Germans, whoever that comes in. But we have a huge interior client, our own people, the people that are here, the expat that lives ar among us, around us, within us, and with us. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a huge clientele. We sometimes forget regional, the people that live in the other islands. Yeah. They have disposable income, you know, bring true, them in. Very true. We go to their country and we spend. When they come to us, sometimes we look down. We don't give them an opportunity. We don't give them the opportunity. But to me, Ron, people talk about currency exchange. A dollar is a dollar. Mm -hmm. Anywhere you go. Okay. People want to be treated properly. Yes, service. Yes. Service. Where I am right now, as you know, the loose mangoose, that's one of the things that we focus on primarily. We're working every day really hard to make sure that our clientele gets some of the best service. We fall short, mm -hmm. you know, we're humans, we fall short, but that's one of the things that we are focused, customer service oriented. That's our first Great. priority more than anything else. And who are our clientele in this COVID-19? Our locals. Exactly. I'm so happy that you mentioned Loose Mongoose. Uh, name a brand that is synonymous to the BVI. It's been around for a number of years. Correct. Of course, with the hurricanes of 2017, it literally forced yourself and your team to start over. Yep. Now we see the revamped um, beauty and elegance that right. is the Loose Mongoose. Speak to us about not only the experience of Hurricanes Irma, but <clears throat> some of the challenges and benefits of having to literally start over. Uh, for all of us, we know Hurricane Irma was, phew, that was a, a bombshell. Yeah. You know, um, the day that I got up there, uh, my good friend, he went up there and he told me, he's like, dude, that's all he said, dude. Mm -hmm. And I, I got up there and I saw it, I, I, you know, tears because this is a, a, a brand that, you know, um, I've been working on for probably like about six years, mm -hmm. you know, um, being there, exciting years. And uh, to see it all just in six hours, just destroyed, it was, it was heart wrenching, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm one of those persons that I see a light at the end of every tunnel. I don't care how dark that tunnel is, nice. if it's a glimmer, of light, I'm going for that glimmer because that means there's an exit to whatever darkness mm -hmm. that there is. Uh, for, so for me, um, I was actually introduced uh, to a gentleman. He doesn't really like his name okay. being called. Understood. So I was introduced to a gentleman um, through my father. Okay. You know, and uh, after having a conversation with this gentleman, he took on the challenge. He, he, he honestly, you know, didn't really know what he was getting into. He, he was just interested in, in, you know, a part of what was going on. And then after he started, we started constructing what is now the Loose Mongoose, you know, he was like, okay, you know, this, this is great. Mm -hmm. And um, it became a more organized business, you know. Um, he's a great businessman, you know, and I'm learning a lot from him. You know, uh, and, you know, there's things that he put in place. We're like a family up there. We argue, we fight, we, we do all kinds of things up there. Call each other names or whatever <laughs> the case may be. But at the end of the day, that's what family does, yeah, right? Of course. You know, without that, you're not family. So, but um, he stepped in, you know, um, he brought it back, you know, with a great plan, with the input from myself and a lot of other people that are surrounding us, our construction team. Um, we have our HR team, we have our logistics team, you know, and then there's the operational team that who's there on ground currently, which is an awesome team. You know, um, we have actually a couple of the best. We pulled a couple of the best awesome. to do what we, we do. And that experience has taught me a lot and still teaching me quite a bit, you know, um, as far as keeping a lucrative business running and not just jumping into things because someone said they want it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a satisfier. Okay. You know, I, I like to satisfy my guests. I like to give my guests exactly 
what they want, you know, and if someone comes with an idea, I say, okay, is this going to be feasible? You know, I, you, know you look over the finances and stuff like that. But um, this is a, a huge learning experience for me, uh, an organizational experience for me. Um, when you are not the only one to say yes or no, Good. It, it, it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Accountability. We hear that word in politics constantly. Yeah. Accountability. Lot, uh, yeah. So it's it's been teaching me a lot. It's been um, humbling me, Amazing. you know, a lot. And um, so I've I've been. I think it's a great experience. I think we have a good thing, a great thing, really going on up there. We have a lot of potential. Uh, and believe it or not, we only open on July fifth. Yes, it's been a very short time. Short time, and then with the closures, etc. And I think we're doing great. Let me ask you this. When you look back at the very short time being opened mm -hmm. and the amazing support that has come from the BVI community regarding the Loose Mongoose and the support that has been thrown, uh, the clientele, what, what do you have to say to BVI lenders? Awesomeness. Hmm. Awesomeness in its entirety. I mean, we've had a great foundational you know, um, relationship with the locals, the BVI landers. And when I say BVI landers, I don't just mean people who from here, mm -hmm. as we just try to put it. Whoever lives in the BVI is of the BVI and the BVI landers. They represent us wherever they go, whether they talk ill or whatever the case may be, or they talk good, they're BVI landers. The support has been amazing, Ron. Amazing. I mean, when I look out there, sometimes I see the birthday parties that we do, you know, the, the events that we've put on, and I look out and I see a sea of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A sea. It's They got your back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They have our back. Yeah. And I don't know who else has been experiencing this, but it's one of the most awesome experiences. And I, I publicly mm -hmm. want to say thank you to the BVI landers, to our people, our homies, our ground people, yes. for being the support and the foundation for that business, the Loose Mongoose. I know everybody has their little, uh, yeah, I get a little teary. Uh, it's okay. I know a lot of people have their different who is it for, who is it not for, who is it this, none, other. The point is, we are here to serve you. You know, whether it be me, whether it be my chefs, whether it be people on the floor, we are here to serve our community. And all we want to do is give a great customer service. We've built an awesome building. You know, um, it, it, it reminds you of that old school, old time, touch yeah, house, yeah, yeah, touch yeah, roof yeah. type thing. It's cool. It's cool, you know. So come through, you know, let's, let us serve you. You know, that's all I ask. Let us serve you. And when we do make a mistake, tell us first before you tell the world. <laughs> uh, I like it. I appreciate your vulnerability um, and emotion. Um, and, and I get it. I really do get yeah. it. Um, you, you spoke earlier just now about being a satisfier. Right. You said you're a satisfier. Who or what satisfies Neil Klein? Who? It's a big question, Ron. Answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> Who or what? Honestly, I... You know, like I said before, um, I, I plunge myself into my work. Mm -hmm. um, I, I kind of get that from my dad. My father's a workaholic. I've become a workaholic, mm -hmm. you know, and I'll admittedly say so. Um, but I've also learned to balance, Good. you know, my work and play and then family, you know, all at the same time. Um, and... It's who satisfies me. Literally, I get up every day. And what satisfies me is who I can actually satisfy. Okay. Okay. Who can I influence? What makes it a great day for me? That day. Not tomorrow. I don't know about tomorrow. What happened yesterday? That was yesterday. What makes today a great day? Mm. You know, I had the experience just the other day, just a couple of days yesterday and couple days before, simply selling a vehicle to a young man and hearing his story, you know, I was like, take, take it, you know, just, we made a deal, 
was like, make sure you take it, but do me one favor. Just make me proud. I want, you know, just do your thing and stay focused. To, that was the highlight of my week. Nice. You know, um, watching a young man with all the stuff that's going on here with our young men, watching a young man really strive in and trying to move forward and make a life for himself, mm. entrepreneurship, you know, which is our keyword, our buzzword in the BBI. And that's what he was aiming for. Amazing. So who satisfies Neil? Neil is satisfied with the people that is, that he can satisfy and help in the everyday walk of life. Got it, got it. You are a father, a friend, the homie, um, <laughs> lover of life. You know, um, I'm happy to hear that you, you mentioned about balance uh, because I do think it's important. Yeah. And you do know how to enjoy yourselves, yeah. uh, yourself, um, which is a great thing. Um, <laughs> talk, talk to me about fatherhood. Um, you have kids. Yes, I do. Um, but you also, you also know what it is to love and lose. Yes, I do. In regards to a child. Mm -hmm. um, you lost your daughter yes. to leukemia. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what's that been like? Uh, that's a, a journey, um, a forever healing, uh, enduring, um, you know, lifelong lesson. Um, most people know the story, okay. you know. Especially, believe it or not, especially the kids who were in high school, when I was teaching mm -hmm. high school at that time. Um, you know, my daughter, Naisha, you know, she contracted leukemia at two years old, you know, and there was um, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, which is a disease of the blood, okay. you know, the bones and the marrow and all that kind of stuff. Um, we went through the experience, her mom and I went through the whole experience of, you know, having to care for her. You know, um, taking her to Puerto Rico for the first instant, uh, went through, she became, she got, went into remission, came back. It was so aggressive that it came back, you know, like after a year okay. and um, ended up in England, in Bristol. And uh, at that time, trying to get a bone marrow transplant. Luckily, her sister was the match. She's a twin. Okay. Her twin, you know, praise God, is still alive and well. Uh, most people know her, Nikisha, um, who actually deals with kids too. Amazing. You know, she's uh, working at the autism center, okay. you know, and um, she was her match, we went through that ordeal, she came back. Like I, get, I said, the, the, it was so aggressive that, you know, she went terminal and, you know, she passed at the age of, you know, four, okay. you know. Um, for me, the experience, I tell people all the time, the one thing, I, I look for lessons in mm -hmm. life. And the one thing I learned from Naisha, um, although she was sick, every day she got up, she liked to color. And as she colored, um, mm -hmm. it's okay. TV, it's okay. As she colored, she, um, you, you wouldn't even know that she wasn't pink. And when she can my team get me some napkin please thank you you know when she would get up every day that's what she would do so in the time i've learned to literally live life every day as if it was the last like i said and literally uh <clears throat> excuse me literally eliminated the word stress out of my life literally eliminated the word stress um because if at two years old you can you can do that thank you and you can uh, you can get up and just move mm -hmm. nothing else that's, not, yeah. that's what it is it's life you know Heartaches, pains, but it's yeah. what 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 when you think about it. And again, I thank you so much for your honesty and vulnerability. Um, 
we carry so much and we wear so much and we are so much. Um, but I cannot imagine the, the loss of a child. Um, and you continue to wear it with strength, um, remembering your awesome, <laughs> fun-loving daughter. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, continuing to be an amazing father to uh, your other children. Yes. Uh, which is the best part. That's so it, thank, that is. Thank you so much. Thank you. When we think of uh, lessons being learned, and just like you mentioned, you being able to take from that the most important <clears throat> lesson, um, what's next for yeah. the man himself? In hindsight, it's 2021, we're doing some really good stuff. Of right. course, 2020 has been, uh, was challenging, extremely challenging. Very challenging. When you think of Neil Klein, um, as I call you, uh, culinary genius. Right. Uh, what's next? Um, currently, um, working with a lot of different places and trying to help them increase the culinary experience in the BVI. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, I had the opportunity to teach during the college years a lot. You taught for about 25 years, am I correct? Correct, okay. 25 years. Uh, BVI High School. And nine years at BVI High School, 16 years okay. at the college, which most people don't really know. That's a long time. You know, that's a long time. It's a long teaching, you know, um, experience, which I, I, I enjoyed very much. And I had the opportunity to teach some of our, you know, culinary stars, nice. you know, currently. Kenneth Malnew, Chef Kenneth Malnew, you know, we have Chef Emron, mm -hmm. uh, we have Chef Kalia, you know, we have Chef Kadia. You know, I mean, we, we have a, a whole bunch of them. Um, we have Chef Lakeisha, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, all these guys, a whole generation, guys, a whole generation yeah. correct. I remember when I came back to the BBI after I did culinary um, in 93, 93 okay. I was actually the only local that held a culinary mm. degree. Back in those days, most of the major hotels, most of the major businesses were owned by expats or ran by expats, you know, that came in, that the hotels brought in and stuff like that. And it's amazing um, to see that, you know, we have Chef Henry Prince, who's at Bitter End, yes. you know, right now, amazing chef, you know, he's also one of the culinary genius and, I, you know, him I and agree. I are colleagues and work together at the college for a long time. Um, I mean, so you have persons like him, you have my mentor, my mentor, I call him the boss still, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, Chef Willow Stout. Oh, yes. You know, um, so my training was at Pizza Island. Okay. So to see from where I came from to what I could have contributed to country, community, society and see yes. it all work, yes. you know, in tandem. So that's amazing to me. So moving forward, I, I still strive to help, uh, whether it be through my consultancy, you know, business, whether it be through, listen, I don't have any money, but, you know, I just need a little help here and there and I can give you what, that's just me. The satisfaction you I talked about. See, going back to that, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the satisfier. Yeah. Seeing satisfaction in others. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Amazing. You know, um, so when I see all this going on, I think we've come really far. I agree. I agree. In the culinary world, in the last like 10, 15 years, compared to what we used to have, to what we have going on now, it's amazing. You know, I've, I've had the opportunity to cook with Chef Arik, mm -hmm. who's doing his soiree. Mr. Flex. You know, yep. Uh, I mean, some amazing people. Amazing people. You know, I think... I used to be one of those that used to say the tourist board and used to do nothing, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Confession is good. Right. I'm sure, but, there, I'm sure there are others who still think Yeah, that. but when I started working with all the hardworking men and yes. women that are out there really pushing the BVI. And the brand. I ate my BVI. words. Yeah. I ate my words humble. I humble pied it. And I was like, <laughs> you know. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So to see all that is, is awesome for me. You know, I work in a place, yes. But I also like to go out. So I want to have good service and yes. good food where I go. Yes. So if I'm one of those that can help to influence that path, 
that's where I'm at. So futuristically wise, that's where I'm at right now. You know, um, I have a lot of stuff going on up here, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens in, in 2021. Yeah. New client, continue to impact, continue to influence, continue to inspire. Um, I thank you so much for this 30 minutes. I wish we had more time. <laughs> I appreciate you so much. Yeah, man, um, it, was, it was awesome. Viewers, you've been watching The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman with the very, very talented, our very own Mr. Neil Klein. Uh, we'll see you next week.